Hi, welcome to Ecarte's Crossing. I really want to start um, doing a bit of a study on a different oracle deck and I just thought I might just pick up the Foxfire for this series. The Kitsune um, Oracle. Just to start with, just the first one. So what we're doing is we're having a look at different ways we can use it. Okay, the oracle arrives, we've unboxed it, we've had a look at the cards. We love the imagery, we love what the cards say to us in some way. Okay. So we've gone through and we've had a look at the imagery, we've looked at the words that are underneath and we've got the word immortality and we looked at that and we looked at the description and we looked at what it meant and we've got an idea of what immortality actually means. It feels like that we, um, our, something to do with our soul in some way. So, uh, and that so we just keep looking at that word and we just go through and we just have a read of what the book says and I think that's really important as we go through and really start to look you know we've chosen a, a card immortality you're a lifetimes long seeker and your soul has journeyed and traveled through skins and forms and elements time and again in this lifetime, you've been offered the wisdom of all that has gone before in order to continue the healing journey of your own soul. So this is really about your, your soul. This card here, the immortality, is really about your own soul. You're surrounded by the energy of the pleat of the peach blossom tree, a great old tree that grows deep within the Kutsunu realms. Kutsunu realms. And those who reach it are small compared to its mighty branches. You are now climbing the tree of immortality, and as you climb, your soul is refining itself, becoming more pure, more wise, shedding all that once held you back. The tree of the immortals whispers to you that you are one of its children, that you are immortal, and you will return to its branches again and again in the lifetime to come. The tree of immortality knows that you are growing strong and will offer to you now some of its vast wisdom so that you can climb further into the journey of the soul. Know that you are being offered time here in this lifetime to complete your soul's tasks, to be surrounded by beauty and joy and to have aspirations for your physical form. You are asked to not attempt to force some kind of inhuman perfection on yourself. Instead, the tree of immortality asks you to embrace yourself and to love yourself with patience and kindness. For with this love there will come a flowering of the soul and the joy and peace which you seek will come to you in this energy of love. For now though, child of the peach flowers, sit a while in the branches of the tree of immortality, the tree that has seen infinite ages, infinite changes. Watch the fruits of the spirit grow and know that you are seen, accepted and loved by this wise and sentient God of of the forest of the Kitsunu. Kitsune. Right, so that's the first card. Okay, so we're going to go through and we're going to have a look at another one. So it's just going through, having a look. Tea ceremony. Well, we know the tea ceremony in Japan, in Japan and a lot of those um, countries are very, very important. Tea Tea ceremony is very, very important. It's very much a sacred, a sacred um, ritual. Okay, so we know that we have immortality and we have the tea ceremony. Okay, the third one we're going to look at today is rituals and offerings. Isn't that interesting how this has come out again? So again, we've got this sense of we're climbing... Um, into new new abilities as we shed away the old stuff our soul is um, rising through a new sense of awareness 
this new development within oneself that just keeps moving through and it does come through from the sacredness of the tea ceremony and it does come and again we have the rituals and offerings coming through so very strong we're all talking about you know rituals and as we're shedding away the old stuff and you know what rituals are we doing as we're moving into new enlightenment and new understanding so that's an interesting um cards for us today let's see what goes underneath okay so here we have the golden moment so again we have that sense of real sacredness it seems to be coming through really strong in these cards there is a sense of hope coming through and threefold protection so we know that we're actually protected we've got hope and we know that we're actually protected on many levels as we find this moment to be able to move forward it seems to be like this this moment that we can grasp wow wow beautiful 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 cards as they come through we have this ability and I'm getting a very watery aspect here as they walk down to the water's edge they're walking down to the water's edge so water seems to be quite important in here we do have a very autumny color here which seems interesting so again you've got that shedding away so as things you know you've got that thing as things are moving as things are uh, shedding away there is that sense of hope and sacredness coming through and here you've got the sense of spring growth and development coming through so it does feel very emotional in some levels it does feel like there's a lot of stuff letting go but with letting go there is a lot of growth as well so you can see that the colors and the symbols and what you see can really um, say a lot um you've got the bird here and this to me is sense of communication being able to communicate clearly in some way um or be able to communicate clearly with your emo you know with your emotions intact you know what's your emotions and things here there's a sense of being covered with the umbrella um you've got the lantern here which sort of lights the way um, you've got this cup of tea, you know, the tea ceremony, which again is can be very, um, the tea is very nourishing for the soul as well. You've got this purple here, which you've got a, quite a bit of purple actually coming through in the cards. So the purple to me is very much about that third eye or that divine awareness um, moving towards the crown chakra. So again, you've got that connection to the divine, connection to spirit. So it does feel very spiritual so you can see with the oracle cards how you've got the meanings from the books you've got the meanings from the words here and then you've got a lot more as you start to explore the cards i mean you can do what you like i mean once you look at these cards you can really start to see what these um you know what the cards can actually mean so doing them like that is just one way of sort of um, developing the cards so yeah just really quickly just wanted to sort of go through and just sort of say you know just very very slowly going through just pulling out oh we've got golden moment again so again this seems to be really important so maybe we need to look that up if it flips out a few times in the book maybe it's time to actually have a look it's number five so what does the golden moment actually mean? Golden moment occurs when in one sublime convergence all that has troubled you or caused hardship falls away and the rewards of all that you have done simply are available to you in a lovely time of well-being good fortune and joy this is a happy card one is which we are filled with the light of possibilities yet we no longer under the strain of effort and the pressure of 
former days. The golden moment is to be felt and experienced as it cannot be created or forced. It is akin to the energy of a holiday with friends when there is true delight, a lack of complication and an effortless ease. There is companionship that is soulful, emotional, interactions that are true and without conflict and defense, and a sense of common community and family around you. The whole world seems to be conspiring to make you happy. Happy because you have an inner contentment, a sense of belonging in your own skin, and the people who love you, who you love, love you in return. There is a sense of flowering, growth, and coming to a kind of rightness at this time. Enjoy the golden moment, for it is sometimes fleeting, so allow it to replenish you, nurture you, give you back a true sense of all that is possible in life and sustain you through the days of changes that lie ahead. While there will be other challenges to face in the future, for now you are held, supported, loved and cherished by the universe in ways that are immediately tangible. There is a sense of being rewarded for your own personal noble deeds, which many people may have overlooked, but the universe has seen and acknowledged your emotional support of others in the past and is now returning to you with the universal energy that is supportive, loving and truly appreciative of the beautiful human you are becoming. So it's really in about understanding what that means. I mean, to me, the golden moment is all about the sense of knowing that you are growing and developing. There's a light here that sort of allows you to just grasp what's possible for you in that moment. It's being very much in the now. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love that. Okay, so let's look at another way we could use the Foxfire um, Oracle deck. For a minute. Let's just grab another Oracle. Okay, just for an example, let's say, you know, you've got, only got a couple of Oracle decks, so you choose maybe a crystal one. So let's choose. Okay, what message do we have today with the Foxfire? Um, we want to know what lies ahead. Wow, interesting. It's all about rituals and offerings. So it's all about that sense of sacredness, what are we offering, what are we um, working through, what do we want to manifest um, with our rituals, you know, where do we find that sacredness within the whole situation, again we've got the sense of growth, so we might be moving through this process with some, some rituals, maybe we're connecting with a deity, that could be really important for us and that's going to allow us to grow and to dance with joy. So we have the sense of maybe connecting with a deity of some sort. Maybe we are finding ourselves moving through a sense of sacred rituals um, as we're offering to the deity in some way. There is a sense of growth happening as we actually find ourselves with a sense of inner peace and joy and happiness. Ooh. Here, I flipped those along. That was really clever, wasn't it? So let's see what crystal grid card is going to go with this. Now, we could, there's lots of ways to do, to do this when you include a second oracle or a tarot or some other deck. So say we're here. So we might include just one. It just talks about boundaries. So we're talking about having these rituals, a sense of sacredness, we're connecting to a deity in some way, and, it's, and we're growing, we're developing, we're expanding our practice, which seems to be the case. So we're finding ourselves with a sense of inner peace, joy, happiness, but we do have to remember our own boundaries. Our boundaries might have to be really important at this time as well. So we might need boundaries. So let's have a look. If we're looking at rituals and offerings, what crystal card is going to go for that one? This is about inspiration. So what inspires us? 
for our rituals or our connection to the um, deity. What connection? And whatever that may be, that universal um, God or whatever you want to call that connection that you have, that, that entity or the deity that you're working with, you know, what inspires you? What enables you to be inspired? Cre a sense of create creative energy as well. So you've got dancing with joy. So what have we got? When we are opening ourselves and we're dancing and things like that, we're opening our heart and we're dancing with joy and happiness. But we do have to make sure that we do stay protected. Again, as we grow, there are boundaries still to take place. So it might be important. So that's another way that you could look at those cards together. Look how beautiful the colors are. Look at that. Isn't that stunning? That is really gorgeous. And so you can just, then you can just layer it. Again, you've got this whole sense. Okay, you're working with rituals and you're working with inspiration. Rituals and offerings. Oops, let's move these across. Okay, rituals and offerings, inspiration. Okay, so what card am I going to add here? I've got your creativity will only be useful when, you, when your mind is neutral and dutiful and meditate. So maybe the rituals as regards to meditation. And that's going to allow the creativity or the inspiration to take place. Okay, so we've got growth and boundaries. Let's think about growth and boundaries. Growth and boundaries. Growth and boundaries. It's your birthright to explore your creative path and be happy your entire life. Again, so with your growth, remembering that you have to have boundaries in some ways, you know, even when you're expanding and you're growing, um, there is a sense of boundary, and I think that's to do with the protection, you know, being protected within yourself. Um, it's your birthright to explore your creative path. So I think you're allowed, you know, you are you you are allowed to have that expansion. I love the way that sort of comes through together really nicely. So the last one is dancing with joy and heart protection. So this one here, I think, should be speaking. Dress yourself with reverence. How to how to the infinite within you and radiate, or bow to the infinite within you and radiate it. So again, I think you're opening up that sense of um, sacredness or that joy, that peace within you. I think that's really important, allowed to have that, you know, to radiate that sense of reverence, that sense of um, infinite possibilities within you as you start to dance with joy, but just remembering to protect your heart as well is super important. I love the way those messages go together as well so that's you know as you can see you start to you can really start to build some layers with the different um oracle decks and things like that this is just one way really that you can really start to work with an oracle deck is just to layer it with other oracle you know you can like you say you can use it on its own good as gold i mean they make clear daily messages and things like that can answer but you can layer it with other oracle decks as well to start to get um some real um messages coming through so let's do um a spread okay we have a spread say we do the heart of the situation okay so the heart of the situation tells me the heart of the situation is about being protected right the heart the is all about being protected threefold protection so whatever's going on for us emotionally maybe allows us to know that we're actually protected this is the heart of it so what else do I need to actually know I need to know that there's hope in the situation okay so even though we feel like the we're being protected um, at this time in regards to the emotional web is going on emotionally for us we do know that there's hope to go on okay we do know there's hope so what action must we actually take 
So what action must we take? Action is to acknowledge our gift. It's like we have a gift that lies within us. It's about using our gift as well. It says born with a gift here, but for me, I'm very much getting the ability to you know what action do I actually need to take is about using the gift that I actually have within me. So the heart of the issue is the know that I'm actually protected in whatever's going on for us emotionally. Um, we need, we need to know that there is hope in it. Um, so what action do we actually need to take is we actually need to acknowledge the gift that we actually have within us and use that gift. Acknowledge the gift and use it, which is really important. So what is our possible outcome to the situation? Is a bringer of change. So it tells us that there will be some changes. The possible outcome is change. Okay, so there will be some changes in the situation. It does tell us that there's going to be some changes. So we've got here, we've got the um, heart of the situation, what else we need to know about the situation, what action do we actually need to take, and what is the possible outcome. And what could influence us, okay? What could be the influence? You know, what could influence us during this process? This one here keeps sticking out. It says, leaving behind what is no longer you. So I feel when I look at that, when I ask that question, what could influence me, could be my past. I feel like when I look at that, when it says, leave behind what is no longer you, I feel like the old me could influence with what's going on, could influence the change and stuff going on. So the old me could influence it, with an, and the new me could also influence it. So it's really about having that juggle. You know, who, which part of me do I want, you know, with the changes and things that are taking place, if I can acknowledge the gift that actually lies within me, um, with the bringer of change, with that changes and things, allowing me to fly free or move ahead free. Yeah, allow the transformation and changes to actually take place. Um, it's about leaving behind the old me because the old is going to, could influence me um, to repeat old patterns where the new me could lead me onto a new and better path. So that's interesting, using it in a spread like that can allow you to get a particular answer per one card, per each card in each position. So yeah, interesting. So just another way of working with oracle cards. Like I said, there's just so many ways to work with oracle cards. If you've just picked up an oracle deck and you're unsure, I think the best way is really to start working with it, trying it with different spreads, keeping a journal of, of your spread, your thoughts, you know, write what you see in the card, describe the card, you know, write down here, here you've got find a place to withdraw to. So what is find a place to withdraw to? That talks to me about silence, isolation, retreat, a sense of allowing yourself to, to take care of self, to a bit of self-care, self-love. It's an interesting card. You know, allowing yourself that moment to breathe can be really important. So just by looking at the words, it allows you to expand. I love that. Okay, so I think that's just about it with the Foxfire, um, the Katsuni Oracle. Just to show you a little bit about what we could do with one Oracle deck and how it can work with a few different decks which is interesting. It really is. I love working with the different oracle decks in different ways. So that's it from me. Don't forget to check the links below. Check the links on my channel. Like, subscribe and ring that bell 
so you know when the next video will be uploaded. Take care and blessings be.